Is it possible to build an Ableton Live set of multiple songs with different tempos, with different time signature changes in five minutes or less? Let's find out. Started the timer, let's get to it. So I've got a template open that I'm going to work from and we're gonna start adding our songs in. So let's drag song one in. Uh, song one is uh, unique in that it does have time signature changes. So we're gonna go ahead and get that sorted for this one first before we do anything else. So let's drop that in and let's add our time signature changes here. So here's our first one. Okay, so there's a two four time signature change. Uh, let's see, let's get it back to four four here. All right, and then let's go, I think we have two or three more in this particular song. So we'll do a time signature change here, two, four, and then we'll do four, four. And then I know there's one at the end. So let's do this guy, two, four, and then four, four. Now I'm doing, adding these time signature changes in. You, you don't have to. Um, I'm using a MIDI click, so it's important that uh, everything is lined up to the grid. Technically, uh, the accent is coming from the MIDI click, so I really don't need to do this, but um, I'm doing this to make sure everything's lined up with the grid. And then it's also important for me because freedom and flexibility is super important when I'm using tracks, no matter the context, uh, to make sure that if I jump around uh, between locators that uh, everything's gonna follow. So let's get our second song here. Oops, see, I'm not even doing this the best possible way I could because I forgot to delete all that stuff. So let's get this guy loaded in to, we'll paste it right there. All right, <clears throat> click up here. That's gonna drop right into place. When I'm building sets, uh, it's super important for me that uh, they're, neat and easy to, to kind of look at and understand exactly what I'm seeing, where I'm seeing it. It's also super important, you'll see here coming up with song three, song three doesn't have stems. So these uh, other four songs, other three songs rather, um, all have stems. Uh, this song is just like a split track. So it's a single, uh, single audio. So if you had like an MP3 or something for one of yours, uh, it's still fine. They're still gonna drop and load right into the set uh, just fine. There's no need to stress about that, okay? So let's move locator four in and give, we'll get, again, we'll give it a little bit of time uh, and let's get uh, our last final song loaded in here. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back to the beginning of the set. We're gonna find all this content and then let's go to four. You can see having this template is what saves so much time um, and allows you to do this really quickly. Now with this content loaded in, I'm gonna delete these extra locators. I don't need these. These are in my template just so I can get up to 20 songs. That's that's part of the um, uh, the advanced range of view template piece that's coming in. I'm gonna assign the add locator button to uh, L, right? So that I can click here and I'm gonna add locators for each of my song sections. Now, if I was actually using my advanced range of view template, then I have automated this process so that I can save uh, MIDI clips in and Ableton will automatically add my locators for me. Um, you can do that if you want to. Honestly, sometimes and most of the time, I just do this because I mean, this takes about a minute for a whole set uh, and doesn't take long at all, which is great. So let's add all these locators in. For me, locators are super important because it's gonna give me the flexibility, the freedom to jump around. Again, that's why we work to get our grid just right, you know, that we were talking about before. Um, that's super important so that my locators are right. All right, so. Let's drop all these bad boys in here. Okay, so now let's get to our last one here. We'll get our locators added in. Then we'll talk about a couple uh, of the other specifics with this set and things that are important to me. I'm gonna do one more final piece with this before we kind of wrap up and talk about it. Um, okay, so I wanna color code all this. So I'm gonna pick this color for this song. And I'll show you why. Again, to me, being able to see um, this and quickly understand that this file in particular is for this song, uh, that this file in particular, or these stems rather, uh, go with song two here. This just gives me a, uh, a better view of my stems, right? I can uh, more easily navigate. Well, I actually like that color better. Let's move to that one. Let's assign it. <clears throat> this may get me over the five minute limit because I'm taking too much time trying to get this color coded right. Um, let's go to this red color here. Okay, we're gonna assign that to clips. And then we're gonna go up here and we wanna color code this one. That's that red. Final color, we'll leave it white here. Okay, let's select this and go here. 
and then that's why. Okay, so we're color coded. Let's do a time check. Uh, 17 seconds, 15 seconds. We'll go ahead and stop that. Just so you can see that uh, I'm not lying. So pause with 12 seconds left. Here's what we got. Let's walk through what we have here. So one, if I press one on my keyboard, that takes me to song one, two, I have song two, three, song three, and four, I have song four. Uh, in song one, we have uh, tempo changes or uh, time signature changes rather that we added in. Each one of our songs is different tempo. So look up here at uh, our global tempo, 81. This one's 80, this one's 7250, this one is 76. I didn't have to re-add that, which is great. That's super great. I have locators so I can easily navigate and jump between my song. Um, but then here's something that's uh, really, really cool that I like about building sets in this way. Let's talk about our audio routing. If I go over to session view here uh, and you look at my tracks, the way this is set up is all of my uh, songs are going to return tracks. And look at all my return tracks. They're routed three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My guide is routed to two. My click is routed to one. I have not done a single piece of audio routing here. All I have to do is go plug in my 10 channel interface and all of my stems go to the exact right place. That's because I use sends and returns. I did the work once and I never have to do it again. So I think we've proven you can build an Ableton Live set with multiple songs in less than five minutes. And what I love about this is if I had automation in here, LTC, uh, MIDI notes to control lyrics and pro presenter, uh, uh, MIDI notes to trigger a teleprompter app, it doesn't matter. No matter what's added to those files, I can still build my set in less than five minutes. But in order to do that, you have to follow a proven process and you have to use tools that have been designed and optimized to do this. In order to get access to those, I want to encourage you to head to from studio to stage.com slash template. When you're there, you could download my free template. I use bits and pieces of my template to format my songs and to build my set for today. That template's available for live nine intro and higher. Uh, and you can use that to start formatting your songs, but you're going to have to follow a process. And I'm going to share that process with you when you download that template. If you want to take it a step further, I mentioned having Ableton Live automatically add your locators for you. If you want to learn how to use Ableton Live to create a connected stage experience, to have even more freedom and flexibility on stage, then you need to become a From Studio to Stage student. And to do that, you can head to from studio to stage com slash subscribe. And when you subscribe, you get access to over 50 courses. You get 200 credits each month that you can download, use to download all of my patches, templates, presets that I have available in the store. You get access to an exclusive community just for subscribers, and you get a free monthly call every month, which means you can join all the students. It's kind of like a ask me anything. Any questions you have about Ableton Live, you can ask me and I will answer them for you. And you don't have to set up a one-on-one -on -one training session with me, which is going to save you five hundred dollars, which is amazing. So if you want to learn how to do uh, and use Ableton Live in a way that's efficient, that's flexible and stable, again, download that free template and consider becoming a From Studio to Stage student. If you want to see more content like this, we post a new tutorial every single day, 10 a.m. Central here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button so, to make sure that you see that and hit the bell icon so you're notified when that content goes live. And you can check out on your phone if it seems like something you're interested in, you can click through and watch it. And if not, ignore and just catch us on the next one. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you on the next tutorial. Take care. Bye.